In this video, we will be ranking every single non-sunset sniper rifle into a tier list so that you can get a better sense of what snipers are worth grinding for and using and which ones aren't very strong. I will be evaluating these weapons based on their ability to excel in PvP modes including Trials of Osiris, Competitive, and just regular 6v6 control. With that said, some of these snipers are more effective in specific modes, so I'll be sure to mention that as we go through the list. Since Bungie announced that they're not going to sunset any more weapons, these snipers will be around forever, and unless an update significantly alters the way that snipers function in PvP, these rankings will probably remain accurate for quite a while. I'll be sure to update the pinned comment as new snipers get released, so I can show how they fit into the list. I decided to create these rankings alphabetically, and it just so happens that the popular Adored is on the top of that list, so let's get into it. Adored, the Beloved's younger brother, is a legendary 90 RPM sniper in the energy slot. Unlike the Beloved, the Adored has a static perk pool, but these perks are pretty top tier. In the first two columns we have Hammerforged Rifling and Accurized Rounds, both giving the sniper a pretty high overall range stat. In the third column there are two options, Triple Tap and Killing Wind. Triple Tap isn't very useful in PvP unless you're going for super long sprees, but Killing Wind is a decent option that grants bonus mobility, weapon range, and handling upon a final blow. Having more range and handling is always amazing, so no complaints there. In the final column, the two options are Snapshot and Vorpal Weapon. Snapshot is the clear winner here for PvP as it greatly increases the speed at which you aim down sights. You'll probably notice throughout the rest of this video that the Snapshot perk or the lack thereof significantly influences the ranks of these snipers because it is just such a top tier perk. Snipers in Destiny 2 aim down sights painfully slow without Snapshot, especially if they don't have a high handling stat. Quick Draw used to be amazing for snipers because it would constantly give plus 100 to the handling stat, but after the nerf, Quickdraw doesn't help your ADS speed whatsoever, so it has become pretty bad on snipers. Adored has some great stats overall and a zoom value of 45, which is considered meta in the current sandbox. It also has a clean model that a lot of people are comfortable with because the beloved ornament looked very similar. In combination with the great perks, this lands Adored comfortably in the S tier. By the way, if you guys are liking the background footage in this video so far, a decent amount of it was captured on my Twitch live streams, and you can catch me over there at twitch.tv slash shadowdestiny. Aposte is a legendary 140 RPM sniper in the energy slot that originally dropped with the Shadowkeep expansion. That version of the sniper was Sunset, and since it has been reissued with new perk options, and unfortunately, some really good perks are no longer present on the new version. This version cannot roll with Snapshot, which is pretty disappointing. However, it has some good perks especially in the third column. It can roll with the same killing win that is featured on Adored, so that's a pretty decent option. You can also get No Distractions, which was just buffed in Season 14, so that's probably a pretty good option as well. In the final column, you can get Opening Shot, which is an amazing perk for snipers. Although these are some good perks, I think 140 RPM snipers are probably the weakest archetype overall because they take 3 body shots to kill normal guardians, and 2 headshots to kill guardians out of their supers. Overall, this weapon has decent stats and pretty great selection of perks, but it is really held back by the fact that it can no longer roll snapshot. Aposte has a 40 zoom and a pretty clean scope if you can get used to the vice theme, but since it doesn't have a way to aim down sights fast, I'm going to put it in a C tier. Bite of the Fox is a legendary 72 RPM sniper in the kinetic slot. Fun fact for anyone who may be unaware, if a weapon's icon is pointed to the left, it means it's in the kinetic slot, and if it's pointed to the right, it means it's in the energy slot. Bite of the Fox drops from the Iron Banner, and because the Iron Banner is only around like once a month, it can be difficult and annoying to grind for a good roll on the sniper. If you do manage to get a good perk combination, it can be very deadly. I find the third column of perks to be pretty funny because the king of all sniper perks, Snapshot, is put in there with things like Hipfire Grip and Threat Detector. Like, unless you're trying to use the sniper as a shotgun, these perks do literally nothing. However, the last column is where things really start to get interesting. Rampage can be cool in 6v6 because once you get 2 or 3 stacks, you can start body shotting guardians who aren't running a massive amount of resilience. This isn't really useful at all in 3v3 modes like Trials of Osiris because there simply aren't that many enemies and getting rapid kills is quite rare. Moving target is a fantastic option in this column because it adds a massive 10 aim assist. You also get to move ever so slightly faster while aiming down the sights, but honestly I don't think that matters very much. Moving target is particularly important on Bite of the Fox because it has a low aim assist stat of only 43. For comparison, the apostate that we just mentioned has a massive 73 aim assist. Bite of the Fox can also roll with opening shot which is perhaps the best perk to pair with snapshot. You get a big boost to accuracy and range on your first shot, and since you normally won't be spamming shots on an aggressive sniper, this is a great pick. The aesthetic, and specifically the reticle on this sniper, is kind of hit or miss with different people, pun not really intended. 
Personally, I much prefer the normal circular reticles, but I have heard a few people say they like this carrot-shaped design. Due to the great perk options and the decent overall stats with the exception of the low aim assist, Bite of the Fox lands in the A tier. Borealis is an exotic 72 RPM sniper with a unique aesthetic and interesting perks. The exotic perk The Fundamentals allows you to switch the damage type of this weapon with this super cool custom animation that Bungie created a few seasons ago. The Borealis also has the perk Ionic Return. This perk grants you bonus damage for the rest of your magazine if you break the shield of a guardian who is in their super, but here's the catch. You must also match the elemental type of that super to the elemental type of your sniper. Unfortunately for the Borealis, this damage buff from Ionic Return isn't very large, and it won't allow you to body shot guardians unless you stack another damage boosting perk on top of it. Back in the day, this perk used to deal enough damage to body shot any guardian, and you could infinitely prolong the perk by using your hunter dodge instead of manually reloading the weapon. Although it has amazing stats for a 72 RPM sniper, Borealis is kind of a shell of what it used to be, and especially with the rise of the stasis subclass, the Ionic Return perk is kind of useless. The fact that it essentially has the high stats of a 90 RPM sniper while still dealing massive damage carries a fair bit of weight, and it also has 45 zoom, which is pretty ideal. However, like all exotic snipers, the Borealis lacks a way to aim down sights rapidly, so I'm going to put it in the B tier. The Chaperone is an exotic 70 RPM sniper that has the exotic perk called I'm actually a shotgun. This sniper is very unique because it has an extremely low zoom value of only 12, which makes it exceptional in those close range firefights. Ironically, the Chaperone has more handling and aim assist than most of the snipers on this list, and it can kill up to 16 meters, which is pretty insane. Cloudstrike is an exotic 140 RPM sniper in the energy slot. This is perhaps my favorite sniper that has come out in the past year, and it is super fun to use. The exotic perk Mortal Polarity calls down a lightning bolt when you get a precision kill, and this does massive AoE damage and one-shots all nearby guardians. If the lightning bolt explosion wasn't crazy enough already, there's another perk called Stormbringer that summons an entire lightning storm when you get rapid precision hits. These perks are fantastic in 6v6, especially in Control and Iron Banner, because you can line up so many kills while people are capping the zones. It's also decent for Trials of Osiris because you can use it to get a collateral kill on a Guardian who is being revived. Cloudstrike has a good amount of range, but otherwise average stats for a 140 RPM sniper. It doesn't have snapshot, but it probably will get a catalyst in the future, so who knows, maybe it will allow you to aim down sights faster, or perhaps it will give you Icarus to match the theme of unleashing destruction from the sky. Overall, this sniper has a ton of potential and lands in the A tier. Darcy is an exotic 140 RPM sniper in the heavy slot. It has a very unique scope that I like quite a lot, but I understand that it is personal preference and some people may not appreciate it as I do. When you aim onto a target, the Darcy's exotic perk tells you random things like how far away your enemy is and it doesn't really help you a ton. However, its other perk called Target Acquired grants you bonus aim assist and precision damage, which is very important. Unlike all other 140 RPM snipers, the Darcy has the ability to one-shot Guardians out of their super, which can really come in clutch. In terms of stats, the Darcy has an amazing 78 stability and handling, so it feels very snappy even without snapshot. The Catalyst adds on another 18 stability, bringing the total up to a ridiculous 96, so this weapon basically has no recoil and it's easily the most stable sniper in the history of the game. However, the Darcy has a low range stat, so it can really struggle on some of the larger PvP maps. It is also limited to the heavy slot, so unfortunately you won't get to use this sniper very often. I wish Bungie would consider moving it to the energy or kinetic slot because it's a really cool sniper overall. It's a little bit difficult to compare heavy ammo snipers to regular snipers, but I've decided that I'm ranking snipers purely based on their ability to do well in PvP, regardless of their ammo type. So therefore, I am putting Darcy in the B tier. I realize that most people will probably use a more explosive heavy weapon like a rocket launcher, but as far as snipers go, Darcy is fantastic. Distant Tumulus is a legendary rapid fire sniper in the energy slot, and if you forget the random spikes, it shares the same basic model as the Apostate and about 219 other snipers that look identical. I mean, the Vice model is pretty unique and cool, but for real, having a unique model gives a weapon so much more class and identity. Apostate outclasses Distant Tumulus in literally every stat category. The notable difference though is that the Distant Tumulus has 45 zoom and the Apostate has 40. Due to the Beyond Light aim assist changes, 45 zoom snipers get a bit more aim assist than 40 zooms. Unlike Apostate, Distant Tumulus can roll with snapshot, so in a way, this kind of makes up for the fact that it has lower stats in every category. 
Although the Distant Tumulus has pretty useless perks in the third column, the fact that it has Snapshot carries a fair bit of weight, so it goes into the B tier. Eye of Soul and Eye of Soul Adept are legendary Knight the RPM snipers from the Trials of Osiris. Although the Adept version of this weapon is just a better version of the base sniper, I'm going to rank these as the same weapon. Hey guys, Editing Shadow here. I originally talked a lot about opening shot and celerity in this section, but Bungie just updated the Eye of Soul with new perks and let me tell you, some of these are insane. The Eye now rolls with Snapshot in the final column and Moving Target, Surplus, Tunnel Vision, No Distractions, and Killing Wind in the third column. That third column is absolutely stacked, like every option here is very very good. Since Tunnel Vision is a new perk with Season 14, I'm going to take this opportunity to briefly explain what it does on the Sniper. After reloading, after a kill, it gives bonus aim assist and aim down sight speed for 3 seconds. On an Eye of Soul without Snapshot, I was able to ADS in 16 frames instead of the usual 20. Apparently the perk also greatly increases aim assist for those 3 seconds, but honestly I don't see this perk being that great because 3 seconds is a very short duration and it requires a kill to activate. Those who are lucky enough to get a decent roll on the Eye of Soul Adept get stat bonuses which is great, but more importantly, they get access to the Adept mods. In particular, you can put the Adept targeting mod on your sniper to get an extra 10 aim assist, which brings the aim assist on this sniper up to an absurdly high value of 78. Adept range and Adept Icarus would also be outstanding mod choices. Overall, the Eye of Soul has amazing base stats that are comparable to the Adored, and I did put the Adored in the S tier. Personally, I think the combination of Opening Shot and Snapshot is better than the Adored's Snapshot and Killing Wind combination, so the Eye of Soul fits into the S tier with plenty of room to spare. Far Future is a kind of odd looking 90 RPM sniper in the energy slot. It can roll both Opening Shot and Moving Target at the same time, which is pretty rare, but this sniper cannot roll with Snapshot. You can also roll Opening Shot with Quick Draw, but since Quick Draw no longer provides the boosted ADS speed, I think it has unfortunately become a pretty bad perk on snipers. Far Future has comparable stats to Eye of Soul and Adored, but it is really hurt by its inability to roll Snapshot. In addition, it seems to take more flinch than Eye of Soul and Adored. I know a lot of you guys liked Far Future before the Quick Draw nerf, but Far Future goes into the C tier for me. Frozen Orbit is a legendary 72 RPM sniper that adopted the model of the Herb Benevolent sniper from Destiny 1. This sniper features an absolutely massive amount of perks in the final two columns, so getting the exact roll that you want may take quite a while, or RNG might just decide that you'll never get it. I guess the good part about having so many perks is that it is possible to get the best ones. The third column includes some amazing options including Surplus, Killing Wind, No Distractions, Moving Target, and Firmly Planted. The final column includes the S tier snapshot perk, but there are also some other attractive options. If you put on Kill Clip, you can go around one shot body shotting guardians after you get a kill and reload. This is insanely powerful and allows you to play with a super aggressive and fun playstyle. This is the only sniper on this list that can do that. It can also roll with high impact reserves, and as our friend Azdracross pointed out, that can be pretty nasty when paired with an empowering rift. This sniper has a base 48 aim assist which is the highest out of all the aggressive snipers on this list. It does have 50 zoom which is considered to be a bit on the high side, but it overall feels really powerful and has a super clean model. Even though the large perk pool may make it hard to get the perfect roll, the mere potential of getting an amazing roll lands the Frozen Orbit in the S tier. The Ikelos SR V102 is a legendary 140 RPM sniper in the energy slot. It has the unique ability to roll with a Seraph Rounds perk, which basically makes your bullets ricochet, and apparently it has the hidden benefit of giving more range as well. In the third column, it can roll with moving target or no distractions, but yep, you guessed it, it can't roll with snapshot in the final column. Before the quick draw nerf, this weapon was decent when quick draw was paired with moving target. Now that quick draw is nerfed though, you're forced to take a look at the other perk options in that column, and all of them do basically nothing to help this sniper. Due to the 140 archetype being generally underpowered and the fact that it can't roll snapshot, the Ikela sniper is going in the C tier. Izanagi's Burden is an exotic 90 RPM sniper in the kinetic slot. Its exotic perk, Honed Edge, allows you to combine multiple bullets into a single super bullet that does extra damage. If you combine enough bullets, you can one-shot guardians to the body without any additional damage boosting perks. Obviously this comes at the high price of eating up all your ammo, so this perk can't be used to secure many body shot kills in a row. You can use Hone Edge to one-shot headshot supers, but again, it may not be worth using up so much ammo. 
It also has the no distractions perk to reduce flinch, but that's about it. The Izanagi's doesn't really have anything else going for it in PvP. It has lower stats than legendary 90 RPM snipers, and it doesn't have snapshot, so Izanagi's is going in the C tier with the note that Honed Edge can potentially be useful to secure easier kills. Long Shadow is a legendary 90 RPM sniper in the kinetic slot. It has significantly lower stats than the S tier I have Soul and Adored, but it can roll with a fantastic perk combination that is moving target and snapshot. None of the other perks are really that great, but the fact that it can roll with this combination means it has a lot of potential to be good. This sniper is unique on this list because you get to choose which scope you want. The ATB long range gives way too much zoom, but the Raptor, Scout, and Rex are all decent sight options that add 12, 11, and 10 zoom respectively. This means that with these sights, your long shadow can have a total of either 52, 51, or 50 zoom. This is a bit high, especially compared to the 45 zoom of Adored and Eye of Soul, but it's definitely still viable. Due to the lower base stats but great perk combination of snapshot and moving target, the long shadow lands in the B tier. Believe it or not, the occluded finality was actually an iron banner sniper from way back in season 3. I actually used the old version recently when I made my video where I hit a clip with every single sniper in the game. Back in the day, you could choose a good scope to make this sniper have a somewhat reasonable zoom value, but unfortunately, the new version of this sniper comes with a ridiculously long range scope and a zoom value of 58. It's really quite a shame because this weapon has some great perks including snapshot, elemental capacitor, opening shot, and iron reach, which can easily give this sniper an insane 100 range stat. Like look at this insane roll, it doesn't even have iron reach, and it nearly has 100 range plus snapshot and opening shot. 58 zoom just feels like a telescope, especially on short range maps, and I mean unless you're trying to do some stargazing, I feel like there aren't really many upsides to having a high zoom. I know Bungie hasn't given us a truly new PvP map in like 600 days, but hey, maybe they'll introduce a new super long range map where this sniper can excel. If it weren't for the 58 zoom, the sniper would have the potential to rank very high on this list. With that said, I'm going to put Occluded Finality in the B tier with the note that if you don't mind the high zoom, this is an A or potentially even S tier sniper. Omniscient Eye is a 140 RPM sniper from the Garden of Salvation raid. I think the sights on this sniper are super clean and I like the overall feeling of the weapon quite a bit. It has approximately the same stats as the apostate that we covered towards the start of this video, and it can roll with a combination of snapshot and no distractions. Fast aiming down the sights and reduced flinch is the recipe for success with this weapon. Since it only has a zoom value of 40, it does get a bit less aim assist than snipers with zooms of 45 or 50, but it already has a very generous aim assist value of 72, so that isn't necessarily a huge problem. Due to its decent perk options, the Omniscient Eye is going in the B tier. It does have good stats and a super clean model, so I would probably put it in the B plus tier if there was one. Succession is a legendary 72 RPM sniper from the Icy Deep Zone Crypt raid. It has a very unique model and scope that matches all of the other Deep Stone Crypt weapons. It can roll with the elite perk combination that is snapshot and moving target, but there are also some other interesting options that you could use instead of moving target. My roll has slideways, which reloads a bullet into the magazine and adds about 20 extra stability and 25 extra handling for 3 seconds. I think this perk is actually amazing for this sniper because the low magazine size of 3 can make you waste a lot of time reloading. Also, the massive handling buff that you get from simply sliding makes this sniper handle insanely fast, almost like it's a rapid fire frame. Alternatively, you can also get Killing Wind or No Distractions, which are both good perk options to pair with Snapshot. Overall, the Succession has many nice roll options, and it looks and sounds pretty cool, so I'm going to rank it in the A tier. The Supremacy is a 140 RPM sniper from the Last Wish raid. This sniper can roll with the all-important snapshot, but the perks in the final column aren't very special. You could use Rampage or Kill Clip so the Supremacy would only take two body shots instead of the usual three, but honestly, if you're not hitting headshots with a 140 sniper, you're in big trouble. I guess Rapid Hit is decent for increasing stability and reload, but those stats really aren't that important for snipers overall. The Supremacy has average stats, but it does have an absurd 77 aim assist and snapshot, which is why I'm going to rank it in the B tier. Whisper of the Worm is an iconic and exotic sniper in the heavy slot. Some of you will remember this weapon as the Black Spindle from Destiny 1, and it has a super cool Taken aesthetic going for it. This weapon was the king of PvE DPS for quite a while, but it has never been super fantastic in PvP. 
In fact, none of the perks on this weapon really do anything helpful in PvP. Sure, if you're a good player you can proc White Nail once in a blue moon, but the other perks don't really do much. Since Whisper has a very low handling stat of 35, it takes a few decades to aim down sights, and once you finally do, the low stability makes the recoil very jarring. Overall, this is one of the coolest weapons in the game, but it's simply not very good for PvP, which is why it's going in the D tier. Widow's Bite is a legendary 140 RPM sniper that's in the energy slot. Its perks are generally very bad, but it can roll with Slide Shot, not to be confused with Slide Ways. Slide Shot reloads 15% of the magazine, grants 20 range, and a massive 50 stability for just over one second after sliding. This is pretty nice, but I'd still much rather have something like Opening Shot or Moving Target. Opening Shot is in the final column, but unfortunately for the Widow's Bite, Snapshot is not. The Widow's Bite has lower stats than other 140 snipers like Apostate, and generally speaking, it has pretty bad perks, so it goes into the D tier. At the time of recording, we know there are two snipers coming out soon, but they're not actually obtainable yet, so I'm going to hazard a guess on their rankings because we actually know quite a bit about them. The Uzume RR4 is a 90 RPM sniper coming from the Nightfall. This one seems to have a lot of potential, and it has the Omelon aesthetic that we haven't seen on a sniper since year one. It has an absurd amount of range for a 90 RPM sniper, which makes it seem really promising, and it can roll with Snapshot in the third column. The final column includes a new perk called Adrenaline Junkie that rewards bonus handling and damage if you get a grenade kill. I don't think this perk will be very good because honestly grenade kills aren't that common. Instead, the best perk here will likely be Demolitionist, which gives grenade energy on sniper kills and reloads the weapon upon grenade usage. Based on its stats and perks, this sniper looks very promising, so I'm going to give it a tentative ranking of A tier. The Praetis Revenge is a rapid fire sniper coming from the Vault of Glass. Bungie is reviving the Firefly perk for this weapon and a couple others in Season 14, so I'm pretty curious to see how potent this is in the Crucible. This sniper has a blazing fast 73 handling and a sticky 78 aim assist, so I'd say this sniper may be pretty decent. Although it cannot roll with snapshot, it does have moving target, no distractions, and opening shot, which are all great perks. It has a unique 49 zoom, which might feel a bit strange, but since it has awesome perks and a very clean model, I think it has the potential to be one of the best 140 RPM snipers in the game. I'm going to tentatively rank this one in the B tier. Now that you've heard my rankings, and more importantly, my justification for these rankings, I really want to hear if you'd change any of the weapon placements down in the comments below. This video took quite a while to produce, so I'd appreciate you dropping a thumbs up rating. We have a fantastic Discord community which you should join if you want to meet like-minded people to chat and play Destiny with. There's a link in the description to check it out. Come say hi! If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy this montage where I hit a clip with every single sniper in the game even including the D tier, sunset, blue, and green ones. It's the top video on your screen now. If montages aren't your thing, perhaps you just want to learn how to snipe more effectively in PvP. If so, definitely check out my comprehensive sniping guide that's on the bottom of your screen now to learn all of the necessary techniques for Destiny 2 sniping.